Hello YouTube and welcome to Sprinkler Season 2025. For a few Aprils now, I've been doing fire sprinkler videos because April's kind of the rainy month and it's April, so it's time for a fire sprinkler video. Today we're going to be testing some corroded fire sprinkler heads to see if they'll actually work in a real fire. Fire sprinkler systems are installed in pretty much every building now and for good reason. A working and properly maintained fire sprinkler system can protect life and property from fire damage. Like any other building system, it's important to keep fire sprinklers well maintained. NFPA 25, which is the standard for fire sprinkler systems, clearly states that any fire sprinkler head that has paint, corrosion, signs of damage, or any other foreign object in it should be replaced. Of course, this makes sense because those things could impact the operation of a fire sprinkler, but how much does this truly impact a fire sprinkler's operation? In the past, I've tested painted fire sprinklers, but I've never tested corroded fire sprinklers. Of course, the findings of these videos should never be used to justify keeping non-compliant equipment in service. If a fire sprinkler head shows any signs that it might not be functional, it should be replaced immediately. These videos are for entertainment purposes only. Here I have several corroded fire sprinkler heads of varying severity, and these were actually pulled out of real buildings. I'm going to be hooking them up to my demonstration, and I'm going to light a fire under them and see if they'll actually open. This right here is the fire sprinkler demonstration for this year. If you watch my previous videos, you might recognize it, but this year it got a fresh coat of paint, and as you can see, I added a flow switch. This used to be an old dresser. I gutted everything out, of course, and I put my fire sprinkler pipes in it. The reason I use this as a display is because it actually has a ceiling that'll catch the heat, so hopefully it'll behave more like an actual fire sprinkler would in a real situation. The flow switch, as the name suggests, is a switch that's activated by water flow. Normally on a fire sprinkler system, the flow switch would be at the fire sprinkler riser, and when the fire sprinkler system is activated, this will connect the fire sprinkler to the fire alarm, so the fire alarm goes off. In this case, I've just connected a bell to the fire sprinkler system, so in the event that the fire sprinkler activates, this bell will go off. You normally see bells like this outside of buildings, they're called water flow bells, and they go off when there's a water flow condition in the building. That is, a fire sprinkler has activated. Now in the past I've assessed performance based on how long each sprinkler head took to activate, but I've come to realize that this isn't a very accurate way to measure performance. Each fire is going to be slightly different. I am burning paper, so they won't be consistent fires. Um, so instead of measuring the time, we're just going to be making observations about the fire sprinkler and how it performs. I'm going to be starting by activating a control fire sprinkler head that's in perfect condition. This one's brand new, has no corrosion on it, and we're going to go ahead and analyze how this sprinkler performs in this demonstration under normal conditions. This is a pretty standard pendant sprinkler head. The way it operates is there's a glass bulb that will burst at 155 degrees Fahrenheit or 68 degrees Celsius. Once that bulb bursts, this plug will fall out and the water will come out and hit the deflector. Every sprinkler head we're testing today has an activation temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit, except for the concealed sprinkler head which activates at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's go ahead and install the first sprinkler head and get testing underway. As you can see, the sprinkler performed as expected. This is what correct sprinkler performance looks like. The sprinkler activated once the heat reached the ceiling and that set off the sprinkler bell, but this is what a correct demonstration looks like. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and install our first corroded fire sprinkler head. This sprinkler head seemed to perform just fine. Once the heat reached the ceiling, the sprinkler head opened. Of course, it could have been a little slower, but that would have been because the fire developed a little differently. For glass bulb sprinklers, the corrosion wouldn't really affect the operation time. Rather, it would just cause the sprinkler head to not open, but for this one, the performance seemed to be fine. Now we're going to go ahead and test a head that's a little more interesting. This right here is a concealed pendant fire sprinkler head, and unlike the other sprinklers, this one's always concealed behind a white or whatever color you want cover. This cap right here will drop off in the event of a fire because it's just soldered on, and once that happens, the deflector will drop down, and the sprinkler head itself will activate shortly after that. These are pretty aesthetically appealing. They might not even be very noticeable to you, but they do exist, and they're pretty cool.
Well, it looks like this sprinkler had operated just fine as well. You can see it's activated in there. And the fire's pretty much out. And I went ahead and unplugged the sprinkler bell because it's a little loud and I don't want it going for too long. So far, we haven't had any failures. The sprinkler head also seemed to perform just fine. As soon as the cap dropped off, the sprinkler head activated and put out the fire. Let's go ahead and test this concealed sprinkler head. This one's also a concealed unit. You can see by the deflector. I don't have the actual concealed body around it, but it should still operate the same. So let's go ahead and install this one right here. Yet another sprinkler activates with pretty much no difference in operation. The sprinkler had activated as soon as the heat reached the ceiling. Of course, one of the bags didn't even burn in this demonstration. If you look closely, there's just a tiny flame at the top, but pretty much everything else in the bag didn't burn, which is why we're not timing these sprinkler heads, because of course, each fire is different. Now let's move on to some upright heads. Let's go ahead and screw in our attachment here. To operate upright sprinkler heads, I have this little arm that screws into the sidewall hole so I can put this in but it should work just fine. So let's go ahead and see if this one will activate. Well, as expected, this one also activated just fine. Again, once the heat reached the top, the sprinkler had activated. Of course, you might be able to notice that the flow rate was slightly diminished on this one. The reason for that is because this is a commercial sprinkler head, so the orifice is a little larger. And on residential water pressure, it's not going to work as good. But of course, it still did activate, so it's a win. Let's go ahead and install another fire sprinkler head. This one's a Rasco upright sprinkler head. Oh, this one did not operate. Oh, this one did not operate. All right, so this sprinkler head did pop. The pip actually came out, but it looks like there's some sort of internal blockage probably because of how corroded it is so i'm gonna go ahead and take a look at it but i mean this line is pressurized maybe i gotta do this really slowly oh. um holy crap Here's the sprinkler head we just tested. It was a very interesting situation where the plug actually fell out, but the sprinkler head didn't fully open. And the issue was on the inside, there was this buildup. I'm not sure what this is. I think it might be something from the pipe it was attached to, or maybe the head was kind of coming apart. But I've been scraping it out of the orifice here. You can see where it was grabbing on there. But I guess that's why the uh, plug came out, because the plug was able to come out. But then behind it, there's still all this stuff. There's a huge chunk somewhere might be on the floor somewhere but either way that's why you want to replace sprinkler heads when they show signs of trouble because of course on the outside they might not look too bad but inside there might be some bigger issues the last sprinkler head i'm going to test today is this sidewall sprinkler head here you can see it has corrosion down here but also something i want to show you is that right here on the pipe that i was just using for the upright sprinkler head you can see here that the paint on the bottom literally melted off because of how hot the fire got and it just goes to show that without fire sprinkler protection a fire can get out of control really fast so you can imagine what that would be in your facility where a fire sprinkler failed to open. Uh, it could be devastating. So that's why you really got to pay attention to these things because it does actually matter.
Just like many of the others, this sprinkler head opened just fine. As soon as the heat reached the sprinkler head, it did go off. Of course, this sprinkler head is mounted a little lower than the ceiling, so it took a little longer. Also, it's a standard response sprinkler head. You can tell by the thicker red bulb, but either way, the corrosion didn't affect the operation. Well, there we have it. Here's all of our activated sprinkler heads. Pretty much every single sprinkler head except for this one activated just fine. This one technically opened, but there was too much buildup inside of the orifice here, and that's why it didn't activate. But I guess that might not be the sprinkler head's fault because I found this one in a dumpster uh, on a pipe, so it's possible that that debris was external. But either way, if there's any trace, you got to replace. Um, you can see here, our demonstration has now got a thorough coat of soot on it, so maybe I need a repaint job for next year. But um, this addition was really nice. I did like having the sprinkler bell go off because it added a little bit of realism to it. And uh, as you can see, we have quite a lot of paper bags. I guess that's what you call reusing, recycling, I don't know. But either way, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you learned something today, and yeah, see you next April. For anyone who's interested in building a sprinkler demonstration, I'll kind of walk around just to show you. So this is an old dresser. Like I said, I put pipes in here. This year I painted them black just to look nice. Um, I covered the back in some scrap wood I found from a uh, old piece of furniture, but it's laminated, so it's a little more water resistant. So this year, again, I have this attachment here. This is the flow switch. Um, and then of course, this is where the hose connects. I have this part here, which is where the sprinkler bed sprinkler bed sprinkler bell would mount and you can see i've attached a chain here so this is supposed to hold the pipe up or just this long part here because when it's filled with water it can get pretty heavy but that's how it is i made it stand myself with some scrap wood and a door hinge and a chain but i mean works nice looks good from the front so that's all that matters